Hey guys, what's up? It's Eric with Advanced Level Automotive. Welcome back to the channel. Now, if you guys already watched part one of this case study, uh, you probably already know that we were able to fix the vehicle by replacing the dual battery control module. But because we can't seem to leave anything well enough alone, and because I promised you guys we would do this, we are gonna go over how this dual battery control module works, and we're gonna see if we can figure out some methods to testing it. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, what I have right here is the old unit that I pulled off of the vehicle. And uh, if you look, I went ahead and I took the liberty of using a label maker uh, to label these fuses and connections just to make it easier for us. Now, if you look over here, this is where the dual battery control module is located. So what we're gonna do next is we're going to look at how this thing is laid out and how current flows through this assembly. Now, of course, we're gonna have two positive battery feed inputs into this dual battery control module. Uh, one of them is gonna be coming from the primary battery and the other one's gonna be coming from the auxiliary battery. So we're gonna start by looking at the primary battery feed that goes into the dual battery control module. So if you look right over here, you'll see that this is where the positive battery terminal is. And this positive battery terminal is directly attached to the primary battery uh, positive post. Now, if you look at this positive battery terminal, you'll see that it's actually attached to this little strip of metal. And uh, this strip of metal, if you follow it, it goes underneath this 500 amp mega fuse and uh, it's hard to see, but uh, if you follow this strip of metal, it actually goes over to this side of the maxi fuse. So if we follow the current flow, uh, you'll see the positive battery terminal through this metal strip. It's going to attach itself at this side of the mega fuse. It's going to go across the mega fuse and right here attached to this side is going to be a large cable that goes down to the starter motor. This is going to be the main power feed for the starter motor. Now, if we go back and follow it the other way, Again, we have the positive battery terminal, this metal strip, and we follow it over here. You'll see that the metal strip actually extends over here and goes into the dual battery control module. This is going to be how the primary battery feed gets into the dual battery control module. Like I said, we have two battery feeds into the dual battery control module. This is going to be one of them. This is the one for the primary battery. Now, if we flip it around and we go up to the top here, uh, you'll see that I labeled it auxiliary battery input. This is going to be where the positive battery cable that comes from the auxiliary battery that's located in the trunk attaches to this fuse box. So if you recall, the auxiliary battery is located in the trunk. The positive battery cable that's attached to it, it travels through the vehicle, makes its way into the engine compartment, and attaches itself at this terminal right here. Now, before that current from the auxiliary battery can make its way into the dual battery control module, uh, you'll see that it has to go across this 175 amp fuse. Now, if you look closely, you'll see that the metal strip at the uh, bottom here, it goes into the dual battery control module. So this is where the battery feed from the auxiliary battery goes into the dual battery control module. So hopefully you guys are following along and hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Just to reiterate, two positive battery feeds the one from the primary battery comes in through here and the one from the auxiliary battery goes in through here. Now, if you guys recall the function of the dual battery control module, the purpose of the dual battery control module is to switch between these two battery power feeds. And the reason it's switching between these two battery feeds is because it's deciding which one is going to handle the load for the interior accessories and powertrain management accessories. Now, if you look over here, pay attention to this metal pad here. Uh, you'll see this metal strip that goes across and down to here. This is going to be our accessory load. Now, I say accessory load, but this also includes all different kinds of things, pretty much all of the electronics. We're talking about anything involving powertrain management, air conditioning, power steering control module. I mean, you name it. Pretty much all of the electronics other than the starter motor are going to be attached to this pad here. Now, if you look uh, closely, you'll see up here we have an 80 amp fuse and you'll see that feeds the power steering control module. Now, if you look over here, you'll see the 60 amp fuse. That fuse feeds the fuse box that's located where the instrument panel is. And if you look over here at this other 60 amp fuse, you'll see this also feeds the other fuse box that's near the instrument panel. Now, if we follow this strip down here, you'll see that there's a 200 amp mega fuse. Now, over here at this terminal, there's going to be a large cable that's attached to it and that cable attaches directly to the fuse box that's under the hood. Now that fuse box that's under the hood 
houses everything from the starter relays to the ignition main relays. So this is where the underhood fuse box gets its power from. So again, looking at this thing in overview, we have two battery power inputs. We have this primary battery feed input and we have this auxiliary battery power feed input. And then over here we have the accessory loads. And again, if you remember the dual battery control module, its function is to switch these accessory loads over to the auxiliary battery during cranking. And the reason it's doing that is to allow the primary battery to focus all of its current flow on turning the starter motor. So again, this dual battery control module during cranking is going to isolate this primary battery feed so that it does not have to power any of the accessories during cranking. During cranking, this accessory load gets switched over to this auxiliary battery input. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Now what we're gonna do next is we're gonna look at the wiring diagram and we're going to see if we can figure out how this dual battery control module knows when the engine is cranking so that it knows when it's time to switch the loads. So of course, if you look at the dual battery control module, you'll see that there's a four pin connector right here. And just like any other module, we're gonna be looking for basics. We're gonna be looking for the main power, the main ground, and we're gonna be looking for the input that tells this dual battery control module when it's time to flip between these two power inputs. So let's go ahead and move over to the computer and take a look at the wiring diagram. All right guys, so now that we have a better understanding of how the dual battery control module and the fuse block assembly is laid out, uh, we can take a look at this wiring diagram. And uh, it's pretty much the same thing we already went over. So if you look over here, you'll see this dotted line. This is going to be the dual battery control module. And if you look at this larger rectangle, this is going to be the actual fuse block assembly. So. Uh, like I said, it's pretty much the same thing we already went over. If you look over here, this is the primary battery and the positive battery terminal. If you look, you see they drew a dotted line here. That's going to represent uh, the battery terminal because remember, uh, this battery terminal is physically attached to the fuse block assembly. So uh, this is where the power feed goes in for the primary battery into the dual battery control module. You'll see it says B positive right here. And then if you follow this power feed over here, you'll see this 500 amp fuse. This is going to be the 500 amp mega fuse. And then there's the cable that's attached to it that goes down to the starter motor. So this is a starter motor here. And uh, what you'll also notice too is that this uh, same wire gets spliced off and goes over to the generator. Now, if we move back over here, uh, you'll see the auxiliary battery here. And of course the positive battery cable for the auxiliary battery. This is going to be the cable that runs through the vehicle, that runs under the hood and attaches itself at the X4 terminal. And if you look right here, you'll see this is the 175 amp fuse. Then if we follow it down, you'll see this is where it's attached to the battery control module. So you'll see there B positive, that's going to be the battery power feed uh, that comes from the auxiliary battery. Now, if you look at the dual battery control module, you'll see that inside the control module, there is a switch. And this switch is what's going to switch the accessory load between either the primary battery or the auxiliary battery. So if you look down here, you'll see these fuses down here. This is going to be the accessory load. Again, over here, it's a 60 amp fuse, and you'll see that that feeds the fuse block that's in the instrument panel. Then there's another 60 amp fuse that feeds the other fuse block in the instrument panel. This 80 amp fuse that feeds the power steering control module. And then we have this 200 amp fuse that feeds the underhood fuse block. Again, you'll notice that all of these fuses are tied together. This is what's going to be considered the accessory load. Like we said before, whenever the starter is engaged, this switch is going to close and the accessory load is going to be powered by the auxiliary battery. I know we already went over this guys, but I just wanted to show you what it was like uh, laid out on the wiring diagram. Now, what we need to look at are going to be the inputs to the dual battery control module, uh, specifically the one that tells the dual battery control module when it's time to close this switch here. So for that, we're gonna move over to the wiring diagram for the starting system. All right guys, so what we're looking at is a wiring diagram for the starting system. Now this wiring diagram is an OE manufacturer wiring diagram, so it's not interactive in any way. Uh, it's a little bit difficult to read. Some of these letters are just kind of really tiny, so hopefully you guys can make out what it says on the screen. So if you look down here, this is where the starter motor is located. And if you look up here, uh, this dotted line right here, is going to be where the dual battery control module is located. And if you look at the larger dotted line, this is going to be the fuse block assembly that houses the dual battery control module. Now, if you look down here, uh, this dotted line, this is going to be the underhood fuse box assembly. 
And if you look up here, this dotted line right here is going to be the engine control module. Now, what I found on this wiring diagram that's really important to me is that it actually depicts three of the wires that are attached to the dual battery control module at the four pin connector. So if we look over here at the dual battery control module, uh, you'll see here it says pin two, over here it says pin three, and over here it says pin four. Now, if we start with pin two, if we follow this wire over here, you'll see that it's actually spliced at this connection here. And if you follow this wire over, you'll see it comes up and it goes to the engine computer. And inside the engine computer, you can see there is a switch to ground. Now, in order to understand the function of the switch here, uh, we need to follow this splice again back down this way, and you'll see that it actually goes to the control side of the starter relay. Now, to make this easier to understand, uh, we're just gonna follow conventional theory current flow and start over here at the power source. So if we look over here, this is a 200 amp fuse. And if you recall, the 200 amp fuse is the power feed for the underhood fuse box. This power feed goes into the fuse box and it goes over to the control side of the starter relay. Now that power feed is gonna go through the coil winding of the control side of the relay. It's gonna come out this way. And if we follow it up, you'll see that it goes back to the dual battery control module. Now let's not forget that there is a splice in this wire and that splice goes over to the ECM. And this is going to be what controls the starter relay. Now this is real important because uh, if you ask me, I believe that this is how the dual battery control module knows when the starter is being engaged. Again, if you pay attention, when you turn the ignition on, not to the crank position, just turn the key on, uh, there's gonna be a power feed that comes through here. It's gonna go through the coil winding of the relay here. It's gonna come back up, go to the pin two at the dual battery control module. And this dual battery control module is going to see full system voltage. Now, when the key is turned to the crank position and the engine computer decides to ground the control side of the relay, it's going to bring the voltage of this entire control circuit down to zero. And so that I believe is how the dual battery control module knows when the starter is being engaged. Again, when it sees system voltage, it knows the ignition is on. And when it sees that that circuit is being grounded and there's zero volts, it knows that the starter motor is being engaged. And at that point, it knows that it's time to close this switch to allow the auxiliary battery to take over the load for the accessories. Now, I think this is really important information because when it comes to testing this control module, this is gonna be one of the main things you're gonna to wanna to look at. Because if the concern is that the dual battery control module is not switching over the accessory load, this should be one of the first things to check. And of course we would do that by putting a voltmeter here at the pin two, and we're gonna look for system voltage when the ignition is on, and we're gonna look for a ground when it's in the crank position. Now moving over to this pin three, if we follow it down, you'll see that it goes into the underhood fuse box, and then you'll see this five amp fuse right here. Now this five amp fuse gets its power from the ignition main relay. This ignition main relay is powered on whenever the ignition is on. So as long as the ignition is on, there's going to be a power source that goes through this five amp fuse that goes up through here and feeds the control module at pin three. This, if I'm not mistaken, is going to be the main power input for the dual battery control module. So when it comes to diagnosing this module, this is another thing you're gonna to wanna to check. We're gonna to wanna to put a voltmeter here and we're gonna to wanna to make sure that whenever the ignition is on, we have a power supply here. Now moving over to pin four, you'll see pin four actually goes to the battery ground. Now this, I believe, is going to be the main ground source for the dual battery control module. Of course, like I said, whenever you're dealing with the control module, before replacing it, you always wanna check the main powers and grounds. Now, one of the things I wanted to address real quick uh, was how this code gets set. So if you guys recall, according to the description for the DTC P305F, uh, this code gets set whenever the voltage at the run crank input at the ECM falls below nine volts. So if you look over here at the ECM, you'll see pin 51. This is the one I identified as being the run crank input to the ECM. So again, if you follow this down, you'll see that it goes to the fuse box, underhood fuse box, and it gets fed by this five amp ECM fuse here. Now this five amp ECM fuse gets its power from the ignition main relay. So whenever the ignition main relay is energized, it's going to power up the circuit here. Now the important thing to know is that the ignition main relay actually gets its power 
from this 200 amp fuse. Because if you remember this 200 amp fuse that comes from the fuse block where the dual battery control module is located, that's what powers up this underhood fuse box assembly. So if you ask me, really, I think this input is just watching the voltage of the accessory load. And whenever that voltage falls below nine volts, it immediately says that there's a problem. Now it doesn't know exactly what the problem is. It's just saying that there is a problem. So, so we could have a problem with the auxiliary battery going bad, or we could be having a problem with this dual battery control module. The code is not really that specific. All the code knows is that it's watching the accessory load voltage and when it sees that voltage fall below nine volts, it sets the code. So hopefully you guys were able to follow along and hopefully I was able to give you guys a good enough explanation of uh, my thought process here. And if any of you guys have more information on the system and how it works, please share it in the comment section. You know, we're all here for the same reason. We're here to learn and we're here to share information. So if you guys know something, please share it with the rest of us. All right guys, so one more thing I wanted to add as a possible way to test if you think that this dual battery control module might be having a problem not switching the accessory load from the primary battery over to the auxiliary battery. Now, if you think about it, with the key in the on position, we should have continuity between the primary battery connection and the accessory load connection. So, in theory, we should be able to take uh, something like an ohm meter. Now, I am at home, so I don't have any uh, test leads, but I do have uh, these crayons that belong to my children just to give you guys an idea of where you could put your test lead so uh, if you're going to do a resistance check using an ohm meter you're going to want to touch the pad here for the accessory load and you're going to want to touch the pad over here for the primary battery feed and with the key in the on position you should have about zero ohms of resistance because this is going to be a direct connection between the two now if the dual battery control module is doing its job when you go to crank the engine over you should theoretically see the resistance jump up to infinite ohms of resistance. That's because if the battery control module is doing its job, it's going to be separating this connection between here and here. Likewise, you could also do this check at the input for the auxiliary battery here and with the other lead, touch the pad for the accessories. Now, theoretically during cranking, you should have zero ohms of resistance between these two connections if everything's working properly. Now, the other thing that I might add is that there are going to be times when both battery connections are going to be connected together. And if I'm not mistaken, that's going to be while the engine is running. And the reason for that, we need to be able to tie in the auxiliary battery into the charging system. If you guys remember, the alternator is directly connected to the cable that is attached to the starter motor. So this terminal over here is actually also used for the charging system to charge up the battery. So if you think about it, these two battery connections need to be tied together while the engine is running in order for the auxiliary battery to charge. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. I'm just trying to provide you guys with some possible methods of testing this control module or pretty much the dual battery system in general. Now, I wish I could show you these tests on the vehicle but uh, the vehicle's actually long gone, so I really can't show it to you on the vehicle. I'm just doing what I can with what I got. Anyways, guys, I hope you found the video useful. I hope you found it informational, or at least entertaining. If you did, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you enjoy the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit that notification bell. Thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see you in the next one.